you know the story that we got when we were kids that your ancestor was out on one Sunday with his girlfriend and some white man jumps out of the bush and throws a net over him? It's not how it happened. Slavery was big business. Africans sold other Africans to the Europeans. But the memory of slavery and of what our ancestors must have gone through is always lurking. Even a pretty little harbor town like Elmina is dominated by its slave castle. And for us, a slave castle is like Auschwitz. Right in here. This very dungeon housed between 150 and 200 women for three good months. This is where they slept, yes. But the place was much overcrowded. So there wasn't enough space for one even to lie down. The result was an outbreak of malaria and yellow fever. So by the time the ships arrived, more than half were already dead. Well, this is the infamous room of no return. That is also the door of no return. When the slaves got here, they never knew where they were going. Neither did they know what was going to happen to them. All they knew was to get out of this room onto the boats. Some actually committed suicide. Because that was the only way they thought they could get their freedom. In fact, it was the Africans who did the raiding and selling of Africans to the Europeans. No European ever went into the hinterland to raid for slaves. It was the Africans who did it. And bef be before the Europeans even landed here, slavery was already in the system. It was slaves that worked in the palaces for the kings. I thought it was more, even at that time, than just money. It had to be just some, just something else that drove them to just kill these people. Yeah, why brutalize them like that? Why brutalize? Them? But then again, I guess that's that's justification, the unrationalization. If you brutalize it, then you have to say to yourself, there's no way we as a Christian people could brutalize other humans, so they can't be humans. But did it surprise you when you found out that Africans were involved as well as middlemen? Um, the thing, I, I knew that Africans were involved. I didn't know the extent to what they were involved. And I also didn't know that once they found out what was going on here, and, and I know that they had to know what was going on here, that they stayed a willing participant in it. That, that's the crazy part of it. I think I was surprised and hurt and angry and everything because, you know, these were people that, you know, you know I sort of had a fantasy about them and, and as our ancestors and your ancestors don't sell you. So that fantasy was sort of blown away. And the worst, the dirtiest secret in African American history is that a surprisingly high percentage of the free Negroes in the South owned slaves themselves. Hmm. And some of them owned, we, we explain it away by saying, oh, but they only own their mother or they only own, yeah, they own their mother, they own their sister, they own their wife, no. and they own some other workers too. A great, uh, um, a surprisingly high number owned workers who they did not liberate. How about the free blacks in America in 1860 during slavery? The leading African-American historian John Hope Franklin of Duke records that in New Orleans, which had the largest concentration of free blacks in the South, over 3,000 or 28 percent of free Negroes owned slaves. So free blacks in New Orleans were five times more likely to have black slaves than the average white southerner. You see, there's no unique evil in white people. So you take into account African history, an African American is far more likely to have a direct ancestor who enslaved black people than is a white person. Should black people today be punished for their history of slavery? That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's exactly what the discrimination against whites 
and reparations are justified by.